it. So appreciate you having patience with me. All right. Awesome, y'all. Thank you. And welcome to Dare to Love Deeply Again after divorce so that you can become secure and confident, even if you are anxious to trust and you still feel insecure. So I'm Terry Vanover. I'm a divorce healing strategist. I've uh, co-authored two books and I've spoken all over the world about this topic. So I'm looking forward to sharing with you. All right, let's go. Maybe <laughs> my thing will go. Okay. So my unhealed abandonment wounds and trauma were really just, you know, a big part of my divorce. And I realized my divorce was symptomatic of all of my unhealed trauma. But the good news is it was also the start of my journey of healing. So my divorce was like the lowest point in my life, but it was also the launch pad to the best part of my life. And I hope that's going to be the case for you as well. So my intention today is to help give you the keys on how to heal from toxic relationships, unresolved childhood, abandonment wounds. I'm going to talk a little bit about what that is. And then trauma so that you can create amazing new relationships moving forward. And it starts with you. You have to build that relationship with yourself first. And then at the end of the class, I'll share how we can further work together. So I'm going to ask a question. What is your biggest struggle? And on a scale of one to 10, with one being like, meh, not really a big, big deal T, and 10 being, oh my gosh, you know, this, this keeps me up at night, I'm really struggling with this. It's preventing me from finding peace within myself. So What's your biggest challenge right now or what's your biggest issue? And on a scale of one to 10, how, how, how badly would you say it's affecting how you are right now? So I'm gonna open up the chat box and look and see what y'all are saying. Cause I like to tailor my trainings to, to the needs of the participants. So each one, even if you come over and over, they're all gonna be different. I'm gonna be sharing lots of stuff no matter which training you attend. Okay, why well, I went through that water quick. Okay, the person that I trusted the most hurt me the most. So how can I trust anyone else? Absolutely. That's, you know, trust is a hard one, right? And we're gonna get like dive deep into trust. And on a scale of one to 10, with one being Nah, not a big deal in my life. I don't really think about it to, to like 10 being like, oh my God, I don't think I could ever have a relationship again unless I resolve this. Like how badly on a scale would y'all like quantify your issues? Okay, all right, all right. Anyone else? And you guys can also share like me personally too. If you don't want everyone to see, you can always share like individually on this. I'll give you just another minute or two. I'm sure trust is trust is a big thing, right? I mean, divorce leaves you totally like overwhelmed and yeah, I mean, if you have trust in this person and they, they leave you or they have betrayal trauma, I talk about that a lot. I'm going to be on a podcast this weekend and that's, that's, that's our topic is betrayal trauma. Like, how do you, how do you overcome that? You know, everything that person said to you was a lie, you know? So, okay. Well, we'll, we'll let me, oh, there, there it is. Okay. So, all right. Okay. So as I think someone else is entering the room, possibly. So as you're entering the room, finding and meeting women in my age group that have done the work for themselves and that, that are healthy. Yes, yes. I mean, I think a lot of women say the same thing about men, <laughs> you know? Um, I, I think it's really important that we do the inner work on ourselves and create that relationship with ourselves. And then we attract other people who are healthy too. Dating apps. That's a whole other like animal beast 
I'm, I'm well versed in that. I have a, a, a male client who is on that dating app journey and boy, is it wild. <laughs> I get to, I get to hear those dating stories week after week. So if you're just joining us, we're writing down our biggest challenge and on a scale of one to 10, like how much it's preventing us from finding happiness in our new chapter after divorce with one being um, like, man, I really a big deal. Man. 10 being, oh my God, I can't sleep at night. I really don't know how I'm ever going to move forward. So somehow I'm like doing crazy stuff on my screen. I'm sharing my screen. So if you've just entered, um, we just shared that. So let me just share while you're doing that to the person, because I can't see who just entered the room on, on your little phones. That's the only thing when I can't, I love to know who's here and where you're from and everything. But so a little bit about me. There's little Terry, little Terry right there, five years old. So if you have not heard my accent, it's been pretty good today. I'm going to say my accent hasn't been too bad. I haven't talked to any family members this week. <laughs> um, I grew up in rural Virginia. Here it is. There it is. And, um, you know, unfortunately, my mom was divorced by the time I was three or four. She was a single mom. She had uh, very little education. I don't even think she she graduated high school. And um, she was divorced. She was a single mom. We grew up very poor. I was a, like, free lunch kid. We lived in a trailer. And uh, it was a, you know, pretty, pretty rough, you know, chaotic upbringing to have a mom who's like so dysregulated and so uh you know you know just you know really struggled herself and she had a lot of trauma she had a lot of trauma and um my father was pretty much my biological father is pretty much out of the picture I can count on like one hand how many times I've seen him and I have some stories if you haven't read some of my posts about some of the things he said what interaction we had was not like he was not this like oh like loving supportive dad at all you know making fun of weight gain and you know that kind of stuff so he was out of the picture pretty early on and and like I said what interactions we had were pretty negative I was sexually abused when I was six seven years old by a family member so that left me with you know a lot of a lot of issues and I grew up and the irony is with people with a, a lot of trauma, they're high achieving. I mean, y'all, I am postgraduate, high, 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 highly educated, very ambitious in my career, very ambitious and professionally, all that good stuff, right? And like you, you've seen, like I've got, I've uh, co-authored two women's books, spoken at international conferences all over the world, but my, you know, inner my my inner ness and my interpersonal relationships with my partners they were a hot hot mess I was needy I was insecure I needed constant reassurance I would say you know I like to nickname myself I used to be the queen of grudges because I could not let anything go whether it was my mistake or my partner's mistake I mean my my intimate relationships were a hot mess and guess what I repeated my mom's trauma, I, but my kids were preschoolers and I was divorced and, you know, I feel like I had a, a, a pretty good guy, but I just, I just was very needy as a, a woman, as a wife, as a partner. And a lot of people, you know, think that because my ex-husband and I have such a great relationship here, we are having dinner. Um, he's over at my house a couple of times a week. You know, we, we, we support our children together. They think that because we have this great relationship, we have this conscious uncoupling kind of a divorce. We had the same messy divorce as like everybody else. It was just chaotic and shitty and negative and two failed mediations and two failed attorneys, and two and a half years, you know, tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars down the drain. But I know that when you heal yourself, you can then create a new relationship with your ex, with everyone moving forward. We've been able to put all of that toxic mess behind us and have a really great co-parenting relationship with each other. And I'm remarried to a beautiful husband and he just happens to be from New York, right, y'all? He's So he's got that thick New York accent. I've got this Southern accent. So our kids get to make fun of both of us. We had a, had a child together. So we've expanded our family. 
and 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 it's just a beautiful relationship and i've co-authored two uh women's empowerment books i've spoken all over about the country and you know it's just a really beautiful life i've created a life that that's just beyond what i really felt like i could have and there's my uh sister wife we call each other sister wife because my kid's stepmom, again, this is another relationship that everyone thinks like I'm a unicorn, but I really don't think this is a unicorn relationship. I think more people can have more amicable divorces, more amicable relationships post-divorce if they do their own inner work. It's trust me, trust me, trust me. I believe it's possible. I'm, I'm no different than anyone else. I just have more tools and more knowledge. So Let's talk about, so someone mentioned, I'm gonna check the chat box. Someone mentioned trust. Did anyone, we got trust, um, creating new, how to meet new healthy partners. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't see anything else in the chat box with anyone wanting to share anything else. So we're, we're gonna dive right into trust. So if you're struggling with trust, right? Perhaps you constantly feel anxious. You're constantly like not, sure you're insecure of yourself you don't have healthy boundaries maybe you're a people pleaser and people pleasers you're full of anger resentment you're passive aggressive a lot of men become passive aggressive and you don't know how to trust yourself so here's the thing when you're in this space of insecurity not trusting yourself you don't know how to trust yourself then you're susceptible to toxic people I don't like to say we attract toxic people because I don't I don't think that's necessarily true. It's just like highly manipulative, highly toxic people. They know the signs to look for with someone. They know how to test certain people and then know that those people are are easier targets for themselves. So you're you're more likely to have toxic relationships, settle for less amongst your family, friends, professionally. Personally, I'm going to go through some some talk about that, how other people that I've worked with, they have like up leveled not only in their relationships, but up, up leveled professionally men who start standing in and start like, you know, standing in that that strong energy of who they are, confident, secure men. And then, boy, all their relationships around them change. So. The real reason you're unable to trust yourself. Well, it's really because you're seeking validation from others because your emotional needs were not met as a child. And I'm going to go over one of my clients. We're going to call him Bob. And we're going to talk about how his childhood was affecting how he was showing up in his relationships and professionally. And, and when I talk about abandonment wounds, I'm talking about emotional unavailable parents, right? And I mean, I'm from that generation where our parents, I believe, did the best that they could. I'm not blaming my mom, I'm not blaming my my parents, because I believe they did the best that they could. But we know, like our parents didn't go to get therapy. They didn't, they didn't deal with the trauma from being in wars and from growing up, you know, poor, being beaten as children. So they passed that down to us. So we, we probably had parents who weren't able to meet our emotional needs some of it like me maybe you had a, a parent who was a functioning alcoholic but was not there emotionally and so it leaves you with a nervous system that is out of whack where you never quite feel safe and secure and even if you've intellectualized it and even if you've done therapy our body holds the score right um if I've read a lot and done a lot of research on trauma and taken a lot of coursework on trauma. Our body holds all that stuff in. And maybe like you can't consciously recall all the stuff that our parents did or ways that, that our, our needs weren't met, but our body remembers it. So your nervous system is out of whack and you never quite feel safe and secure. You know? And add on toxic marriage, a toxic relationship where you had to walk on eggshells, or maybe you've got, you still got family members where it's still toxic and you still have to walk on eggshells. You have to keep the peace, right? And you had your own intuition, your own needs 
were were your own feelings were suppressed as a child again i was i was there as a child i mean the things my mom said with things like you know you better stop crying or i'll give you something to cry about after she'd already beat me with the brush right and so i mean so that's just like telling your nervous system shut up shut down you can't express yourself you can't say hey i'm hurting i'm i need to feel this so we really we're not really given the tools to express our needs, express our desires. And you weren't allowed to trust yourself or to trust your own intuition or to express those things. So how do we heal the trust issues? Because I'm sure that's really what you're what you're here for. This is all great, T. How, how do we heal it? Okay, you shouldn't trust yourself, okay? You should be cautious until you've done profound inner work, profound inner healing, you should really be cautious because sometimes those red flags, they feel like home. Um, I, I had a client come to me when she first came to me, um, Jenny, she was in a relationship and he was a great guy, but she really struggled with, she really wanted to work on herself before committing to this, this great guy. And rightly so so she came to me at right the, the right time because because the truth is she came from a family where her mom was bipolar she, her her ex had alcoholism issues and so just the emotional roller coaster again just completely dysregulated right and so you know a couple things are happening she's missing you know she's afraid she's going to miss the red flags again which she will because Having a safe, comfortable relationship for people like me, for people like Jenny, for people like Bob that I'm going to talk about, that doesn't that doesn't feel right, right? I mean, I remember when I was with my husband initially, and you know, he's just so safe and loving and warm and comfortable and everything. And my sisters even comment on what a what a really just a calming guy he is. And I didn't know what to do with this because I'm like. I needed drama. I needed chaos. I needed, you know, I needed this, this felt dysregulating because I was so dysregulated. And so you have to learn how to soothe your own self, how to, to really go within, know your own needs, know your own feelings, and then learn how to communicate those needs and feelings. That's, you know, because until you do that, you really can't create the healthy boundaries. And for some people, I know someone mentioned here about trusting, because how can you trust yourself? I think, I think, Danny, what you were saying at the beginning of is like, maybe your trust isn't so much about other people. It's just like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I could handle heartbreak again. I don't think I could handle the pain of going through another breakup, another divorce, or having someone betray me again. And so you've got to do all the healing work to heal all of that and to become strong again, become secure again, become confident. No, because listen, with, with love comes risk. And that's just the truth. I can't take that risk away. And until you identify the exact root of that insecurity and heal that wound that is keeping you dysregulated, that's keeping you looking for other people to validate you. Like Jenny, she she needed to get to the heart of like why she kept walking on eggshells. Why was she so afraid of her ex-husband despite like knowing intellectually he's he's just full of hot air, right? But, you know, why did she still feel like this need to save her mother? Like why? Because it was taking her away from a really amazing career. And so once we identified and healed the exact root of what was keeping her prisoner to, to these insecurities, to these wounds, this trauma that she was still trapped in, um, she was she was never gonna escape it. She would still be a, a, a prisoner to them, right? And to whatever was triggering them. And so what I do is teach people a systematic five-step actionable process where you're healing using inner child healing work, using conscious intentional tools, somatic work, so that you can then heal that. Because until you do that, you cannot follow through with the boundaries. You cannot get into a relationship until 
and feel safe and secure until you know that you're healed. And you know, no matter what happens in this relationship, I know that I'm safe. I know that I'm okay. If this person decides to leave me one day, I know that I can survive this. I know that I'll be okay. So the key to developing boundaries is developing the self-worth first, is developing the self-love, doing the inner child work, doing the reparenting, doing the somatic work so that you are calm, you're secure, you can tap into your intuition, you know what your needs are, and you can effectively communicate those boundaries. So before we jump on, I just want to give, give me a thumbs up if you're following me, if you want to write me what's resonating with you right now with the trust issues, let me know. A little bit of, I'm with you, T. Or is there anything with that that's resonating with you? It really feels like, okay, I got this. Let me check the chat box. Okay. Okay, y'all gonna be quiet. Y'all gonna be quiet today. All right, no chat box. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you're gonna hear a little bit about my story here because for me, that loneliness was like in that deep, deep sense of like sadness, feelings of shame, but not really knowing why, feeling really deeply lonely. That that was really indicative for me where I needed to heal. So if you understand that these feelings, yeah, okay, it resonates, keep going. Okay, awesome. These, these feelings, these judgments, these negative emotions that are occurring over and over and over again are indicators of where you still need to heal. And if you understand that that negative emotion is there to teach you something. It serves a purpose in your healing. And so, you know, part of what I do, like, like I said, with the somatic work, um, guided meditations, all of this like systematic approach that I have, it's all about unveiling what's truly underneath all this negative emotion. And for me, my loneliness was the start of my journey. I was um, homeless at the time. Like I said, it was brutal divorce, homeless, staying with a friend of a friend of a friend in a, in a, in a, in her basement at the time, crying myself to sleep. Very, very sad. Watching very sad, sad documentaries and hold my babies tight, crying myself to sleep every night. And I was desperately lonely. And I know we got a, all men on here today, <laughs> but the truth is I was desperate for male attention at this time. I mean, I wasn't even a, a month out of my separation and man, that pulled to go and find someone to make me feel like, hey, you know, you're, you're, you're cute, you're smart, you're pretty, you know, someone I really, that, that pull was really strong for me. But the, the best thing that I did, and I didn't do very many good things during my divorce, but this was one of them, was to really kind of consciously surrender to that loneliness. That's what I call it now. At that time, I just said, girl, you know, you you have issues. <laughs> you need you were lonely during the marriage and you're lonely now. And I again, like I recognize I was always seeking a lot of reassurance from my husband. And I recognized, oh my God, I was really lonely in my marriage. I was really lonely. I had to sit with this loneliness. So that's what I did. I just sat night after night after night with that loneliness. And what I recognized was that the loneliness was masking not really truly needing someone else, but feeling that I was unlovable. And again, I sat with it and sat with it. And what I realized was, I, again, I was a, not a meditation practitioner at that time, but I knew enough to say, I got to stop running from this. And I recognized that if my own biological father didn't love me, I must be pretty unlovable. You know, I must've been pretty you know, just, and so when I recognized that, then I went on that healing journey to how do you heal this? How do you heal feeling completely unlovable and needing other people to prove that you're lovable? And that was my start of my journey. And now I teach other people how to know. And, and what I realize now is really not being disconnected from other people, right? I didn't need another man to make me feel worthy. You don't need a partner to make you feel worthy. You need to connect 
with yourself because loneliness is not disconnection from other people. It's disconnection from the part of yourself that knows that you are loved, that you are loved unconditionally, that you are worthy, that you matter. And that's always a theme that I have with every single client is that there's a disconnection within themselves. So we reconnect with that. We give them tools so that they reconnect with that, that inner child that needs that, that love, that needs to know that they matter, that they're worthy. So skip into the next. So, okay, I kind of kind of got into this, right? Is like understanding that for many of us, um, it's it's really about having parent. You know, for me, it was having like physical abandonment, and and for mo most people, it's emotional abandonment by their parents. Their their parents just did not have the the skill sets or the were equipped to give them what they needed to meet their emotional needs. Or in some cases, like Jenny, previously she had a dysfunctional parent relationship. She was parenting a bipolar mom her whole life. So she never really got what she needed. So I taught her how to reparent herself and understanding that that these, these issues are really masking underlying feelings of unworthiness, unlovability. That's really the fundamental feeling of loneliness. It's a disconnection. Or maybe I had a client, um, uh, Cam, and he really, he had to, so he he was, he was fought me, y'all, for a long time. I, mean, I don't have abandonment wounds. I, I have two parents and they were happily married and we were, you know, we were well to do and blah, blah, blah. And, I'm like, okay, great. and within like, you know, the first breakthrough session, okay, we've identified here's here's the abandonment wound. I mean, his parents' love was completely conditional. And when we looked back and I helped him identify how how that love was conditional, and he was still doing that to himself. He was carrying that on and saying, you know, I need to make more money so that I'm worthy. I need to, you know, be this successful in my business so that I'm I'm I matter, I'm a good enough, right? And it was again, this was just we just repeat these um, patterns in our adult life, but until we understand how they're they're subconsciously driving us and then heal that subconscious wound, we, we can't ever break that pattern. So it's not about finding the right partner or, or the right feeling. It's about the disconnection from yourself to know that you really are unconditionally loved. And like I said, what I do is a little bit different where I utilize a systematic five-step actionable process where you learn the intentional tools and exercises, you love and accept yourself unconditionally. And that's what I did with Cam. He had to learn how to like accept himself. It didn't matter how much money he had in the bank, because you know what? It was never going to be enough money, y'all. And that was, that was the thing. He just kept on and I mean, just driving his health into the hole. And, you know, he had this fantastic home and you know and and it was never going to be a good enough and he still didn't feel good enough and you never will because i say this all the time you cannot solve internal issues with external solutions it doesn't work you have to resolve it internally and and learn how to fix it internally within yourself that's what i was trying to do with the male attention right trying to resolve that with external validation we're trying to prove myself with grades and prove myself with, you know, getting accolades in my career and all that stuff. And, and I still never felt good, right, about myself. It's never going to be enough. So what if you're still second guessing yourself, right? You have people pleaser tendencies. We're getting to Bob here, right? You're anxious. You struggle with boundaries. Now, one of my favorite healers, teachers um, is Peter Crone. And I love this. Life will present you with people and events to reveal where you still need healing. And that's what my divorce was for me. And that's what it is for so many people. It is kind of like the the like bottom, right? You hit kind of rock bottom and you go, I got to change. I got to change these patterns. Or I'm going to be honest, since there's a lot of men on here, a lot of men jump after divorce and they jump into relationships. And so most men clients that come to me, it's not after the divorce it's after kind of like two or three girlfriends where it's like bam 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 it, it just got more and more toxic terry <laughs> i was you know i thought it was the ex-wife and then i realized oh it's it's me i keep attracting these toxic women 
And so, you know, I, I really feel like, you know, your divorce can be just this, this point of like transformation. And until you heal those underlying issues, you're going to be an emotional prisoner and you're never going to find peace. So, so like, you know, if Cam's bank account gets low and, you know, he's, he's always going to be triggered. He's always going to be like at the mercy of that. Or like, you know, we talked about that, like, well, gosh, Cam, how big of a house do you need before you feel good about yourself? So again, seeing that in that way, you realize, okay, I, you know, I can be happy living in a hut by the beach, man. It doesn't matter. Cause I, I'm, I'm at peace. So again, especially with men, particular leave that I work with they continue to repeat those toxic relationships until you heal that underlying wound that's causing you to minimize the red flags so that 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 woman that makes you feel really great about yourself she really is exciting and makes you feel really fun and she makes you feel really great um I'm trying to think of a particular circumstance I had one client and oh you know what he he was um it's all about, I tell people when you're dating it, don't base your dating life based on how they make you feel. Make sure you're basing it is do their words and their actions align, right? And so he was dating this woman. And again, he started recognizing, oh, you know, Terry tells me their words and actions don't align. She was pretty, you know, undependable. She would talk about how great it was that, you know, to spend time together or to build a relationship but she was always bailing she was always you know um not showing up dates last minute and you know he's a single dad you know this was like you gotta have a, a plan and someone who's committed so what what we did through the reparenting and inner child work was to recognize why was he he's so attracted to her like what was it about her and you know what she, she just made him feel so like relax and comfortable and like accepted for in his own skin. Those were his words because, you know, he was adopted. He was in this uh, conservative uh, fundamental religion where, you know, you had to really, you know, and here he was kind of a wild spirit, free adventurous kind of a guy. And, you know, that's, that's what the attraction was. And so what we did was heal that part of himself. So he learned to accept himself for who he was so that's really the key yes okay so yes okay so i'm reading the chat box here um learning how you know alcoholic dysfunctional families yeah i love that i love that i love that you're doing that inner work and using that resource absolutely yeah yes love that so why you're second guessing yourself, right? It's because you've got those unhealed uh, uh, triggers like uh, my client and how, you know, she made him feel comfortable, accepted. And so sometimes there's red flags. It feels like home, right? And by taking responsibility for your own healing, you take back control. So I do want to talk about, let me see. Yes, okay. So I want to talk about Bob, right? Because when Bob came, he was in a great relationship. In fact, it was her who encouraged him to reach out to me because you know what? He just had nice guy syndrome, y'all. Nice guy syndrome is that people pleaser thing. You, you just always giving, giving, giving. You have poor leaky boundaries as I call them. And so Bob just like was second guessing himself. He just really was second guessing, you know, do I want to commit to this relationship? Because I have a shitty pattern here. I keep repeating toxic relationships. You know, so should I keep going? I'm not sure. She seems really great, but I can't trust myself. I second guess myself. And again, through identifying how his father's um, abandonment wounds, like he had strong, like a, a father, you know, issues, daddy issues kind of. And so they were showing up and, and so he really felt the need to people please. And so like, he'd want to go for a run, but then he'd be like, well, I don't want to let her down. And of course he'd go and do what she wanted to do and not be honest with her, not totally honest with her and then feel resentful and then become passive aggressive. And I see this with a lot of guys, a lot of nice guys, right? They, they think they're being nice, but the truth is they're not putting their own needs first. And it, and it starts to wear on a, it starts to, erode 
your self-worth, but it also will, will cause you to become passive aggressive and resentful, right? And so one area that it was really prominent was in his business. He ran a very like high, uh, like high profile business here in the Chicago land area. And he was like running it. His father was the owner. So he, oh, again, he had that father shadow, right? Always needing to please his father who would never be pleased no matter what he did. Right. So, um, so, so, but he would show up and, and the thing was, he would put out these little fires, like people would come to him like over these little piddly like problems. And, he, and what he recognized through his work with me was that it kind of gave him like a sense of like validation is like, oh, they keep coming to me. They need me. But really it was eroding his, his, how they viewed him as a boss, because imagine going to Mark Zuckerberg, right. Of Facebook, because like, you know, some, someone somewhere of the billions of people got locked out of their account, like something silly and trivial, you know, you, you delegate that kind of stuff to the people who should be doing it. You wouldn't be doing that on your, so he, he wasn't stepping into his secure, confident, self and being a boss being an executive you know like he needed to be and you know what through our work he started putting up those boundaries delegating responsibility following through um feeling good about himself changing how his relationship with was his father which thank god because you know his father ended up having cancer and so able to to shift that around and it's like powerful and again you know so you have to develop the self-worth. Like I said earlier, it's not about putting up the boundaries. Because if I tell you on this workshop, hey, y'all, go start putting up boundaries. You got to say no. All that'll do is set you up for failure because unless you know deeply, deeply, innately that I matter, that I'm worth these boundaries, that I'm worth following through, you're going to continue to you make promises to yourself and let them relapse or people push against those boundaries and then you'll like give in. So you learn how to let go of that unresolved neg negativity, let go of that inner chaos like Bob did and learn how to, to heal the parenting wounds that he got from his father on his own because his father's never going to change, right? This dude's like 75 years old, you know, he's not going to change. So we have to do that. We have to do the healing ourselves. You have to resolve the childhood trauma. You have to learn how to give yourself that unconditional self-acceptance, radical self-care, radical self-compassion. And only then can you then start to put up those boundaries, start saying no, saying yes to you. And it's a process and it's a process that I teach. Now, all right, let me just stop, take a breath. Let me take a sip while I'm doing that. Give me a thumbs up if that's resonating any of that like um hits you if you're understanding where we're at put that in the chat box or any questions about that let me know check the chat box take a breath I love talking about this stuff. <laughs> That's why I just, everyone thinks Southerners talk fast, uh, talk slow. No, we talk fast. Some of us talk really fast. I, I often have to slow myself down. I've, already, I've caught myself being so like, I'm talking so fast. So so what I want you to understand, right? If you haven't from the, the three keys from this is a healing, it's a multifaceted process, okay? Like I said, you have subconscious wounds and your body knows it. Maybe on a conscious intellectual level, you don't understand. And what I do is connect that subconscious with the conscious part of you and also give you that somatic work so you can let go of that in your body forever. So, And that's why so many of my clients come to me and they've done years of talk therapy. And I think it has its place. It absolutely does. But it can leave you stuck because it doesn't address the complete picture. So in a five-step systematic actionable, because I'm an action taker, right? It's a multi-modality proven process. That's where you're gonna really see significant changes over short periods of time. And that's the other thing, just talking about our issues over and over and over 
And yes, that is a very good book, Gary. The Body Keeps a Score. And again, it was a groundbreaking book on trauma. And we know more and more and more about trauma. And again, so many people think that trauma is like going to war or it's being raped or being in a horrible accident. And trauma is so much more than that. And we're, 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 there's so much study on that. Um, in fact, one of the biggest, like uh, we call it little t trauma, is re having a parent who's resentful against you. They follow children uh, whose, whose mothers exhibited signs of resentment and those children fared far worse than children who had um, physical abuse. I mean, that, I mean, again, these emotional abandonment wounds, they are devastating. Um, so thank you for bringing up that book. So if you haven't, I think it's Vanderbeek is his name. Um, I think I'm getting his name wrong, but anyway, great book. But again, he talks about this and, it, and it's using somatic work, breath work, all kinds of, you have to soothe your parasympathetic nervous system to ease the anxiety so that you can do the emotional work. Therapy is great, but if you're so dysregulated that you can't, you know, sink in everything, or if you're just talking about things over and over and over and becoming re-traumatized, that's not really healthy. So I, I utilize a, a five system and using actionable meditations and um, uh, journal activities with intentions behind them. That's really been key, life-changing. And again, I still use these tools because I still have relationships and I love it. I love that I have a toolbox where like, oh, I've got this, I've got this, you know, issue I need to address in my marriage, or I've got this issue I need to address, like keep coming up for me. It's just so powerful. It's life-changing. So once you learn these things, you have these tools to carry on in all areas of your life, like Bob did with his, with his business. Oh, and I didn't get to the best part. So during COVID, <laughs> during COVID, his business did the best it ever had had done. And I do think it's because like their leader finally stepped into his like leadership role and really started taking risks, but like, you know, manage risks and really delegating and like letting other people provide ideas and stuff. So it was really, that was really amazing. To see. And he married that woman. So that was like, yay, good, good, good outcome for Bob. So, all right. So. This is where I told y'all at the end of end of our workshop together, I was going to offer um, a breakthrough session. Now, this breakthrough session is so amazing and so powerful. People get off the phone and they're like, oh my God, you ask amazing questions. It's the right question and lead you to the right answer, right? And, and, and what I do on this phone call is that we really dive deeply into the root of it so that we can diagnose what it is you need so that you can move forward quickly, right? So listen, if you've tried traditional therapy, it helped, but you still feel stuck, right? That, that was me for many, many years. Then this is for you. I'd love to hop on a call and like identify those issues because I can't do it on this workshop because it's like a, a you know, a group thing and everyone has their own specific, you know, prescriptions and everyone has their own specific um, upbringings and and I help you like fine tune and and diagnose and get to the the root of that very very quickly. Now I I'm going to be honest with you. You have to be willing to do intentional, actionable exercises. I I once had a business coach to tell me she was like, don't tell people you give them homework. And I was like, eh, well, if you want results, I'm going to be honest with you. You got to be able to, to invest a little bit of time in yourself. You've got to be willing to try something new because the old shit didn't work. We're trying some new stuff, right? So you got to be willing to do some intentional, actionable exercises that will quickly transform your life. Believe me, it's worth it. Trust me, trust me, trust me. My marriage wouldn't be where it is and is secure and confident if I, I don't continue to do the inner work, right? If you want to feel happier in all of your relationships, just like Bob and, and, and Jenny who completely turned their relationship around, a person doesn't have to be healthy. That person can still be a toxic person and you can have a healthy relationship with that person. You're never going to change your mom, your dad, you know, but you can change your relationship with them. So if you want to feel happier in your partnerships with family members, with your boss, like this is, this is how, I mean, that's the great thing about this. It, it, it's, it it's goes through all of your relationships. 
if you're an action taker, like I am, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm very much like to do things. I'm a doer. I'm an action taker. And you're ready to invest in a program that works because you're done wasting time because you're never going to get, that's, that's the one resource y'all you're never going to get back is time. You're not getting any younger. Uh, we're not going to be able to repeat yesterday when we, you know, screw it up again. Right. For me, time is more precious than anything. And that's, a, I have big, 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 strong time boundaries because I know how precious that is. If you're ready, willing, and able to make changes, you just don't know how. You, you, you know something's off, but you don't know how to implement those changes and keep them working. And You need that accountability partner to, to show you your blind spot, to show you where you're missing and why, why you're like, keep self-sabotaging, right? So like I said, for everyone that, that joins today, I've set aside two 45 minute breakthrough sessions called the three keys to finally find inner peace after divorce. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna identify your exact abandonment wound, how it's showing up and sabotaging your life, your relationships, and, and, and what the prescription is that you need to heal them quickly. Because I can't do this on a training because everyone is different. Everyone's needs are different. Everyone's traumas are different. Every, everything is different, right? So we individualize these breakthrough sessions. And this is a totally free breakthrough session where we just get to know each other. We're going to go over the three steps you need to set healthy boundaries. So you stop feeling lonely, you stop feeling unworthy, and you finally feel secure and confident in all of your relationships. So we're going to go over the three things that you're doing that's keeping you from like feeling really good about yourself and how to set those healthy boundaries moving forward. And then I'm going to share with you the strategic roadmap that you need to heal. So you stop second guessing yourself. You learn to trust yourself so that you know that you can handle no matter what life throws your way. You feel worthy and confident and you have firm boundaries in all of your relationships. So you feel good enough in all of your relationships. And again, totally free. And, and we're going to talk about like, all these things specifically tailored to you and your needs. I, these are these people just walk away and they're just like, oh my God, these questions are amazing. I can't believe it. So I'm going to share, I've got in the chat box the link. I'm going to share that again. So you can copy and paste the link from here, the link, or so you can. Go right from the here, from the chat box, right into my digital cam calendar, camera, digital calendar, so we can set up a time to talk. Or I'm, I'm going to be emailing it out and saying, thanks for coming today. Come join me. Let's talk one-on-one. -on -one. I love that there's so many men here today. I had a young man come to me at the gym. <laughs> he's, he's not a divorce client or anything. And he's young. And he goes, you know, you helped me through some bad stuff. And my, because it follows me because we're, you know, he's a, a gym instructor. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. I was like, I'm so glad. I think that, that, that so many men are like open to doing like the healing work. And I'm like, man, this nothing makes me happier as a woman, as a wife, as a mother to see men like devoted like working on themselves and being being open enough to to do this because I know it's not easy and we live in a culture where it's not necessarily acceptable so I praise you for being here I'm just yay so um yeah so there's the link again I'm going to email it out before you go if you'd love to share like what your biggest takeaway is I'd love to hear it uh, in the chat box if you want to come off I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the uh, recording too and then if you want to yes I'm gonna stop.